What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network and Cloud Dosage. Back again with another SSC podcast. And I got a, I got, I, I got a special guest with me. Well, he's not special anymore. He's here all the time. Our good friend, Lo-Fi. Mark, Lo-Fi, how are you doing today, man? Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. How about yourself? How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing great, man. I'm um, just playing games, having fun. Um, by now, if you're listening to this publicly, here, here's what we did. Because if you're you, if you're watching this, you're watching this. If you unless you're a member, you're watching this on a Sunday. So what happened was SSC podcast was you know normally airs on Thursday, but something happened. I couldn't do it on Thursday, and I did want to talk about all this tasty goodness and news, but I didn't know when. And I was going to squeeze it into our new show, which is uh, Cloud Streaming Diagnosis, where we do a compare of different um, video games on different platforms. Um, and this week we did it on Division 2. So check out that video if you haven't already. Uh, if you're watching this on Sunday, if you're watching this on Friday with the members, it isn't out yet. Uh, <laughs> you know, but um, we were going to cram it all in there. And then I decided, no, let's 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 just make this an official SSC podcast. So. Um, but with that said, on the screen, you guys see this um, uh, cloud dosage story. Booster Ward adds six new games, including Persona 5 Royale. That's some big news, folks. But we're not going to talk about that this show. Why? Because we just talked about it. I don't want our guest. Well, he's not a guest anymore, but I don't want Lo-Fi to, to run out of here and be like, damn it, I'm tired of this. We're repeating ourselves. So if you want to catch what we had to say about that, become a member. Hit that join button. And check out the member version of this show it was a great conversation. All right. With that said, I am going to make Lo-Fi repeat what he's been playing this week. So Lo-Fi, what have you been playing and what have you been playing on this past week? So uh, as far as streaming on YouTube, I've been playing Far Cry 6. I, complete, I completed Far Cry 6. And then I did like, I did a first look on Cyberpunk and those were all on Stadia. And then uh, I also got to play a little Sniper Elite 5, uh, Forza 5 and some other stuff on xCloud over the past week. Oh word, okay, okay, cool. How, how was your xCloud experience? Am I, uh, surprisingly, it was really good. Oh, well, okay. I mean, it was better than I thought it was gonna yeah. be. <laughs> <laughs> but but not like yeah like um like we were saying earlier it's not up to my standard of like how good stadia, stadia was I now know. i from what i understand that gfn that 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 top tier that puts it all to shame from Ooh. what i understand everybody's been telling me it's really good um yeah brother like the 3080 tier and shout out to Dusty Iran. Dusty, t tweet this out. Let everybody know that we're live for the members too. Because well, this is all last minute. So this is all on me. Um, But uh, yeah, man. The, that 3080 tier, when I first got it, and actually I did a video, but I left it in the chamber. Um, It didn't impress me for the price. That's the thing. I think that's like the biggest gap for a lot of people is the price. Um, but we're going to talk about it. Like GFN did something this week to address price for a lot of gamers. But um, when it comes to their platform in entirety. Uh, so I had a problem with the 3080 tier price in, in, in relevance to its performance. Fast forward to now that I was at launch and la it launched in uh, fall of 2021, I believe. Um, fast forward to now. Oh, my God. The AI upscale and a lot of the things that they've implemented, man, it fidelity wise it it's in a league of its own um and that latency is great too as long as you're playing on the you know how i play like you know what i'm saying via the pc if you want you want that same um output pretty much you got to get a nvidia shield for your tv you know but um no it, it's great to play again stadium has its perks and its things that despite the fidelity are, are, are standalone for Stadia. You know what I mean? So there's some things that if you are a Stadian, you know, you might say, oh man, I really missed this from Stadia. But 
I think if you're somebody that wants that top notch fidelity in the cloud, the best way you can get it, this is it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's a great way to go. Well, you know, as far as all those little features from Stadia, if you're missing those, uh, I've I've heard it on Pretty Good at 30 that the Steam Deck is like it has all those features. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, Lo-Fi, what is that? And I should know this. And, the, and, and my friends, hold on, let me see. I'm going to go to... I'm going to go to Cloud Dosage Handheld. I always forget the name because I think it was Pet. Was it Petter? One of, one of the contributors there did a hell. Oh, Oden Light. See, the Oden Light has certain features too that are dope. Like, it, yeah, you, that's. You can live stream from it. It looks good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, That's dope. It has emulation and everything else. It's yeah, like, man. It's basically like an Android, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a great device too. If you're like, like a cloud only device, I'm kind of like, but I would spring, I would spring the 200. I think it's 200 for the Oden light. I would, sp once it, gets back, you know, I would do it if I had it. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I remember catching that article uh, when it came out and uh, I was like, I was really impressed. I was like, nobody's talking about this right here. This is dope. Yeah, because like with the streaming and everything, like it it really does have the features that like actually draw you into why you might want that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me do this, uh, Dusty. Give me about give it about two minutes for it to register. I got to do something behind the scenes so we can show your comments. Um, da 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 da, -da this da 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 that. All right, so then your comments will come up in two minutes. But Dusty says that. The game that you gave away, um, and you were there for that stream too, Lo-Fi. The game that we gave away courtesy of my good friend, and, and I made up with him, Lo-Fi. You'll be proud of me. Um, I made up with uh, uh, Geek to Sneak. I said, Geek. <laughs> Lo-Fi grabbed me by the shirt collar and said, man, what, you, what are you doing, man? I'm talking to Geek like that, man. And I, and I said, I'm sorry. Uh, but Geek to Sneak gifted us uh, Severed Steel, and he's... And, um, Dusty is saying that Severed Steel is coming to Luna next month. Hey, Dusty, Dusty, can you provide, can you drop a link? Can you drop a link? Cause we kind of behind on cloud dosage at this moment. I got to make sure they get up to speak. No, I'm just joking. But yeah, but can you drop a link to that? Cause I, I missed that. That's some dope stuff for Amazon Luna. We try to keep everybody abreast yeah. of everything that's happening. Um, on all these cloud platforms. Uh, but that's dope. What do you think about that? Uh, uh, low fi you, you think it's good that Amazon Luna's getting that game? Yeah, yeah, man. I, I think they're doing really good. Like they've been adding some really like uh like the games they've been adding lately have been up to par. Like it mm -hmm. hasn't been any like no scrubs. Yeah. Yep. I can dig And shout out to them. I don't know if you guys caught Purple Haze's uh Martha's Dead. No caution, very very graphic, but yeah, shout mm -hmm. out to Luna on that one too. Yeah, like I said, to supplement my travels, like if I'm going to somebody else's house, what's that? Perp ate a bird. Perp ate a bird. Oh, Jesus. Is it that great? Yeah, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know Perp, Perp is, she, she's she's letting out her inner Ozzy Osbourne. She went and ate, instead of eating the bat, she ate a, she ate a bird. Strange. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I like Amazon Luna. I really do. Shout out to MJ Parks. I know MJ Parks, every, you know, he, he got, his, he got his fist clenched and MJ, I got to reach out to you. I got, I got, I got an idea for you. Good brother. I think you're going to like this. Um, you know, we're, we're, we, we can get some more MJ Parks out here. So, re, so reach out to me via DM. I think you're going to like this, but yeah, MJ hooked me up with the fire stick. Oh, d dope, dope. Yeah, we need more MJ Parks, man. We need more MJ on the mic. We need more MJ on the mic. M MJ, I got, a, I got an idea. I think you're gonna like it. Um, but I know MJ like streams coming soon. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, man. He, yeah. he, he looks at everything that we release, and he got his fence, his fist clenched. Like I, I saw him and Jack. They had, they had a nice, um, spirited conversation back and forth about Luna. 
Luna, man. I like it. I like it. I, I think it's cool. For me, performance and output is important. It's key. Um, technology is key as well as far as what you're offering to to break the mold. And I, and I get Stadia did that more than a lot. But fidelity is is key as well. I don't, you know, I don't want to feel like, I don't want it to be so definite that I'm playing in the cloud. Like I want to feel that at least the feeling that I got by playing with hardware in a lot of ways. I don't want the performance and the output to be like, oh yeah, this is the cloud. Ugh. Yuck. You know, and, and Amazon Luna, when I'm playing it, man, I'm I'm happy in that regard. So yeah. like it. All right. With that said, enough babble. Let's get on to the show, man. Cause we we we, we all are running short on time. Uh let me do this. I have my show notes up. What the hell's wrong with me? Episode one. This this should be labeled episode one hundred four. So we want to welcome everybody uh, to SSC Podcast one hundred four, where this week we're going to be talking GFN's big blog post, Amazon adding a new game tab to Fire TV devices, and Xbox keeping Keystone shelved. Oh man! All right. Let's yeah. Start, let's start with topic number one, Low Five, <laughs> and that's uh. GFN blog this week, man. So here's here. Let me do this. Uh, let me show you something. This is the blog post. We did a video on it here. Check it out. Uh, but there's a lot of things happening this week. First and foremost, get 40% off a six month priority membership. Plus take a bite out of Halloween with V rising. One of 11 new games coming this week. I thought 12, but it, it's 11 now. And that's cool. Um, so there's the, the six month priority membership. That's the membership where you get the equivalent to a 2070 rig. Um, and you can, and you can use that to upscale as well. I think beyond 1080p, I believe, I think you can max that out to 1440p. I could be wrong. Um, yeah. So there's that. And then there's 11 games coming. Um, a lot of them are Halloween and, and horror base, but the two big ones, or Star Ocean, the Divine Force, which launched day and date on GFN. And this is a favorite for Stadia gamers. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach is now available. Yeah. Uh, on GFN. Star Ocean is, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on all this, man? Give us your thoughts. Like, uh, dude, they're doing great. Especially like with the cell and everything. Especially if you have like a, already have a, a Steam library. Like, dude, you should try out cloud gaming. Mm. But if you're somebody that's looking for a spot to cloud game, I mean, look at what they got here, man. And like day and day drops. Uh, Security Breach is a dope game. Like, I, I don't know if you, any of you had a chance to play it on Stadia, you can pick it up over here. But yeah, I think they're doing a great job. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, and let us know, hey, Dusty, being that you're here with us live, you can always let us know if something audio-wise audio, audio wise is off. We had to change some things up. Uh, let us know if the audio is off. Can't find an official post from. He's Okay. As soon as you're, there we go. So Dusty says, to be fair, that Logitech device that was marketed weird or mislabeled. I, it can do local as well as cloud. I've seen video. Yeah, I know it can do local. It has a very limited um, space on it. But my the thing argument is, is the price you can yeah. get. Oh, yeah, you're, you can just, all you're really paying for at that point is there's their controller yeah. molding around the, the yeah, nah, it, it really, <laughs> there's other things that have bit, better value. Logitech is giving you an Android device. It has some cool capabilities. I think what it can do like 120 Hertz or something like that. And that's cool. And that's beyond the steam deck. But as my brother was tell explaining this to me, because my brother is such a big nerd and it's such a PC guru. Cause he asked me, he said, where did you have a steam deck? And I was like, no. And he's like, do I need to buy one for you? And I was like, no, I was like, I just ain't, I ain't into it. And he's like, hold on. You're not into having a mobile PC 
like, dude, what are you smoking? And I'm like, no, like, no, bro. I just, it's just not, I ain't into it. But, but we're, we're talking about an Android device versus a mobile PC. It's a big difference. It expands your well, capabilities yeah. so much. So, and the price difference isn't that far to get to a Steam Deck. It's exactly. You got PC gaming. You've mm. got mobile gaming. You've got emulation. You. Yeah all the cloud services can be played through it it's where logitech it they just kind of fall short here and there with theirs yeah um like uh the rock like rock he was talking about how he has like a hundred dollar android device that does all the things logitech does and then he just uses like a key with it yeah oh, yeah i'm I, I i totally i believe it i believe it so yeah, and it's like like my or something. It's like my tablet. So, I totally agree. I'm not. Uh, oh, okay. So it's, it's not that it's a bad device. It's just there's other. It's just not as compelling Ooh. as it should be. Hold on now, breaking news. This ain't breaking. You know, for people Sunday watching this Sunday. Breaking news, lo-fi. You see it on your screen, brother? Hold on, let me let me put it out here. Yeah. Breaking news. Uh, shout out to John Scar, my brother from another mother as well. Amazon just announced new games coming to Amazon Luna in November to the Luna Plus channel. Kingdoms of Amalur, Re-Reckoning, Vengeful Guardian, Moonrider, Windjammers 2, Close to the Sun, and Severed Steel. I love Kingdoms of Amalur. Oh my God, like Amazon Luna is killing it with the RPGs. They're ki that's where they're killing it with the RPGs. I would have liked to see, I would have liked in its heyday for Stadia to see, to see Stadia do what Amazon is doing with RPGs. Cause I think that's great. Those are great games to play on the cloud. But holy cow, Amalor, I know, I know the game is old as heck, I know it. But man, I love that game and I love, I'd love to play it on the cloud, man. Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, dope stuff. So, okay, cool. Uh, Yeah, we'll, we're gonna be streaming that definitely. I'm sorry. All right, so back to our regularly scheduled program. That that excited me. Um, But yeah, so with GFN, they got some cool stuff in the blog, Uh, 11 games security breach and the whole uh star ocean um and then and then the discounts i think that's all dope all right let me see what else we got here okay so let's let, let's it, i think that's a perfect segue to our next topic which is amazon luna they announced a game tab for their fire tvs a game section for their fire tvs this comes courtesy of uh cloud dosage as always the story beats amazon fire tv adds a game <laughs> section highlights luna and so the way that it works lo-fi is that um there like when you go to your fire tv like how you see here there's app store free movies tv shows and now there's a section called games and then it'll pull up when you go to the game section it'll pull up uh it's supposed to be android games the luna on prime and luna games so what do you think that's about awesome. that <clears throat> i love it i think that's a great idea that's a that's a good way to use something they already have mm -hmm. to integrate further luna into your whole like i mean it just makes sense if i'm a subscriber of your games and you like just smoosh them together where i can get to them yeah yep. you know another thing that luna does is uh that i and it's because i guess they have the video service but yeah how when if somebody's playing on luna and they're streaming it to twitch it shows it in the like the dashboard like oh, wow who's streaming yeah and it says that they're live so like when you're looking to decide what game you want to play you might see somebody else playing and be like oh no i want to watch them stream uh, uh, battery, battery. and that was something i was saying stadia, stadia should have yeah yeah 
So hats off to Luna for that. I always thought there was complications with that because Google was worried about that whole monopoly thing because they wouldn't allow, you know what I mean? To where Twitch probably didn't have to worry about that, but Google's like an all-stop shop for everything, you know, but it would have been dope to you see. You don't see Microsoft worrying about the monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go. Send all your hate mail. You, you, <laughs> send, it, send all your hate mail to the, 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 the yeah hey no true words have been spoken uh shut up guess the break. yep that's the rances yeah that price we're talking about that logitech uh device yeah that's that's the thing i don't think lo-fi to me no device that's being marketed for the cloud even if it has um native capabilities especially if it's an android device i can't see over 200 dollars I'm sorry. With Wi Fi, like, like maybe 240. You know what I mean? Like, it has to come with a SIM port so I yep. can get 5G or, you know, exactly. whatever's yeah. to come. Yep. I need a 4K display on it. it like, like, we talked about this the last time. Mm-hmm. Sell me the device super cheap. Yeah. And you'll pro- and probably even lose money selling the device to me yeah. because you're going to make it up on the back end through services that I have to subscribe through just yeah. to play my games now that yeah. I'm on the cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and for every, yeah, you got to work that out somehow. Cause it, there's no, there's no legitimate reason to me to have this device. So, all right. So with that said, uh, lo-fi, can you give us some more thoughts on, here goes a big question. Um, because the argument has been, I've started to see is that this is something that Stadia should have had. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think this would have made a big deal for Stadia if they had this? Yeah, I mean, it would have moved the needle a little bit. I mean, at the end of the day, we all know it comes like they needed games. You know that was the big change, but little things like that, yeah, got a bit of difference. Because exposure, a lot of people still didn't even know what it was. I mean, yeah, I I, I think I think it would have helped more than hurt, but you know, we'll oh definitely yeah. definitely. But, hey, I'll be right back. Can you can you give us thoughts? Let's let's go right into project. Here, let me do this real quick. Because for some reason, my wife can't turn the doorknob. Uh, I gotta go turn the door now for her, and what would these got you. without me? Got you. All right, so Project Keystone is canceled. All right, give us your, your thoughts on that. I'll be right back in like sixty seconds. All right, uh, Project Keystone. Uh, so the little everybody's been hearing a rumor about uh, Microsoft and this their TV dongle, like uh, the Chromecast or like Amazon Fire Stick, and uh, I guess it was codenamed Project Keystone. And I don't, I'm not sure of all the details. MM2K probably knows a lot better and we'll get him in on this when he comes back. But um, the gist of it is uh, Bill said some things and I guess the project's canceled now. So um, now that they're not going to do that, it's kind of a bummer because it was like your window into being a part of the Xbox community and ecosystem without having to necessarily buy all the hardware and i'm not sure why they made that decision uh i don't know if it was because they're afraid it would cut into console costs or what ah i think it's kind of a bummer though because it's like like i said it's a a really easy entry into x cloud and being a part of the xbox ecosystem Mm mm-hmm even though you can kind of like already do that, like I'm already doing that through my browser. It'd just be nice to have it in the TV. But I mean, you got what Samsung's got their game hub yeah, and uh, it's in there. Like, so I don't, I guess with all these third party integrations happening, maybe Microsoft doesn't feel the need to have to even make those steps. 
but I'm not sure. But I, when I was talking to everybody, I wasn't really clear on the details of how everybody found out that the project had been canceled. Yeah, like um, that you brought up an excellent point because I don't know if the project is being canceled opposed to it just being like not it, it, it's they're doing the right thing and instead of t in typical microsoft fashion and i'm gonna explain this article that i just put up here in a second oh the, well, well they can't see it yet but for you if i'm explaining it in a second because what was what microsoft tends to do is like when we talk about projects that happen at major companies there's the conception process where, you know, a lot of people call it pre-production where people sit around and they try to figure out what it is that they want to do. And then people start working on it. And when people start working on it, the term is usually it's in flight. We're working on it. We have a deadline that we want to reach milestones in between that. And you know, it's, it's being put together. And then there's the rollout of it. Once it's complete and it's ready to be implemented, then there's the rollout. Mike, normally when right before the rollout is when people talk about their products or services or right at the rollout time, they, you know, kind of like boom, like kind of like, like Apple and Google does. Microsoft has this thing of talking about stuff during its in-flight phase, early in its in-flight phase and talking about it like it's coming soon. And they get people all riled up and excited about it and then off, often, I won't say all the time, I won't even say most of the time, but I will say often, something that they've hyped up or talked about either isn't as robust as they made it seem like it was gonna be, or it gets canceled um, before it even comes to fruition. So I think Microsoft did the right thing here to where they- It gets people talking. It gets people talking and they pull back expectations of, when to get this in your hands. Here's why I'm questioning, and I know we, we reported on it being canceled, but that's because everybody else was had, you know, said indefinitely that it was being canceled. I don't know if it's being canceled opposed to what was given by Jazz Corden here, just being reiterated. Jazz found out on May 28th what was going on because there was so much talk about it because I think it was shown before or he got some information on it. There was like a, a school or something for it. Um, and here, listen to this from Xbox when, when, when they were asked about this. Says, Our vision for Xbox Cloud Gaming is unwavering. Our goal is to enable people to play the games they want on the device they want anywhere they want. As announced last year, we've been working on a game streaming device code named Keystone that could be connected to any TV or monitor without the need of a console, a Microsoft spokesperson stated. However, um, as part of any technical journey, we are constantly evaluating our efforts reviewing our learnings and ensuring we are bringing value to our customers. We have made the decision to pivot away from the current iteration of the Keystone device. We will take our learnings and refocus our efforts to a new approach that will allow us to deliver Xbox Cloud Gaming to more players around the world in the future. Jess continues, from what we understand, Keystone has been development for a couple of years with Microsoft continuing to finalize the product's feature set. Um, and let me see here. And then they talk about more of the things that they, they were expecting for it to, to do. I mean, then he says this, the exact timeline for Keystone remains unclear, but I wouldn't expect to see it anytime soon, particularly not at the Xbox and Bethesda sh showcase coming up. At do, you, do you think that would just like, be a snowball that killed their console. Well, because I mean, think about it. If I'm hanging out with my friends, they're playing on their Xbox and they're like, start talking about it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just playing on this dongle. Nah, mm -hmm. I don't have to pay all that money. I don't have to. Yeah, no, I don't have to do all that. <laughs> like how many people are going to switch, you know? No, nah, I don't have to download an update. I don't have to do none of that. I think that's what Xbox <laughs> wants because unlike PlayStation, Xbox loses money on their consoles. That that was that was released 
Um, well, it's something that we always knew because every time, <laughs> particularly in the first thing, they don't make hardware. So I don't understand why it wouldn't be like a like priority. Like, let's get this done. Yeah. Well, great question. And we talked about this in, in the pre-show um, where I was I've been con- it's been confirmed to me by some credible sources that Microsoft there's a reason why when they went to the CMA and responded to the CMA last week about them at a technological disadvantage there's a reason why they did that we've been telling you guys this I've been following Microsoft for a very long time well before we even knew what a stadia was I've been following Xbox in particular for a long time Their methodology of doing cloud gaming didn't pan out to be as competitive as the the raw technology didn't pan out to be as competitive as they expected it to be. X Cloud was the oh go ahead. Were you gonna say Lo Fi? I was gonna say, uh all right, so you're saying that doing it at scale is the problem? Yeah, like X, remember the Series S was supposed to not see the light of day. First, they were going to do the Series S. Then all the stuff that you're hearing now about developers complaining about having to implement the Series S in their in, in their development of games because of some some of the bottlenecks. That was already complained to Xbox about, and Xbox heard it, and Xbox said, "Okay, we're not going to release the Series S. There's going to be the Series X." And then there's going to be xCloud that people can play on their Xbox Ones or anywhere else if they want to experience the current generation of consoles. Then they saw what Stadia was capable of and they said, "Uh uh-oh, our methodology isn't suffice. So then they brought the Series S back. This isn't coming from me. I didn't make this up. This is coming from uh, 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 Brad Sams, excuse me, of the Paul Thorat Think Tank that knows more about Microsoft than any of us. This came from him. So what it is, is that the current setup for xCloud technologically isn't as competitive in the output as GFN, as Luna, some of these other things. But where they make up in the technological capabilities, they have the fact that these are in Azure data centers, in Azure data centers, or critically acclaimed and they're everywhere you know and and that's why despite that you may hear people say well my x cloud experience is similar to my stadia experience or x cloud is better for me that's because they're in those azure data centers they're not only atypical azure server blades but they're in those data centers and locations means everything because azure is more critically acclaimed than google clouds data centers right so that's what they have at their advantage but the problem is is the the raw technology them being able to do beyond 1080p they had to hire third-party support to even do that via the browser um and from what i understand they're having issues doing this on a dongle now granted they're doing it on tvs on the samsung tv and they're utilizing that samsung technology that upscales it and makes it look great makes it play great but that's samsung's ai technology that's that they're that's exclusive to them along with lg having their own that's exclusive to them xbox doesn't have that technology to put in these dongles so yeah i can i can understand that because if you play the android app versus the browser oh yeah. it's a total total yeah. different yeah so that's where they're running at and they're trying th- their current setup they're trying to figure out a way to make it work better technologically um and they just don't feel like they're they're, re- they're ready for this yet and there definitely isn't a rush now that stadia is going I mean, Grant, I mean, there's still GFN, there's Amazon, but th- I don't think they really consider GFN a competitor because GFN is using cloud. I mean, even though their cloud service is great, 
they've always been very clear that their hardware is first and foremost. So then, you know, and, and the cloud gaming for them is to supplement those who can't access the hardware. So I don't think Microsoft really considers them a competitor. Amazon Luna, as great as that works, they're still only in the US. So now that Stadia's given up, I don't think that they're in a serious rush to get this thing out just yet until they feel like they've got it right. But the reason why I brought up this other article is because this is kind of like the state of affairs since March of this year and all Phil Spencer did was double down on what was said in March. I don't think, I mean, in May, I'm sorry. What was said in May of this year. And I don't think we understood what they were saying in May. Like when they said it's, it's going to be some time off, we're a long ways away from it. That That's basically what they said. We're a long ways away from it. So, um, damn. Yeah, man. Like, look. Believe slow burn for cloud gaming. <laughs> yeah, but here's what I've been saying, Lo-Fi. I've been trying to tell people this for the last two years. When I've been showing the NASDAQ article and been talking about this, people thought I was pulling this out of my rear end. Everything that we've been saying on this channel, Phil Spencer and company said to the CMA. So you ain't got to take it from me. I ain't got to lie about video. It's a, it's immature cloud gaming. It doesn't mean that the capabilities are immature. It just means that for the market saturation, it's immature. It's a 1%. They said that to the CMA, 1% business. Where have you heard that at? Heard it here. Yeah. Yep. We've been telling y'all yep. this. The cha- Us on this channel, not just me. Us on this channel, we've been telling y'all this for a while. So no, Xbox does not have the silver bullet to take over cloud gaming. Now, will they try different things here and there in hopes of maybe superseding or overshooting the the projections or leapfrogging the projections? Yeah, they're gonna try stuff, but they don't have a silver bullet either. What you see is what you get. It'll gradually improve like everyone else. So, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're We're just founders at the forefront, at the very forefront of something new and that's how we got to look at it oh just my thoughts this my crazy thought um <laughs> let's see what uh dusty iran has to say here he says luna is a sign that i'm still eating good in the cloud i might pick up a deck though so i can have a native option to fall back on and I think that's, we were talking about that, Loaf. I want your thoughts on it. I mean, do, do you feel like the cloud gamers now, after the closure of Stadia, they're like, you know what? I don't mind still cloud gaming, but I need a hardware alternative <laughs> in case this, you know. Wait. Uh, I wasn't really sold on the Steam Deck, right? Yeah. When, it, when I everybody was first talking about it and everybody's like all excited. I was like, I don't get it. Yep. But now that I don't have Stadia and I'm mm-hmm. having to look around, I'm like, yeah, mm. it's not a console, but yeah. it's not a PC, but yeah. it's not not a console, and it's yeah. not not a PC. Yep. It is a little of both. Like I've seen people playing Nintendo Switch games on it. Yeah, like it has a docking station. You can dock it yep. and connect it to your TV uh-huh. and play it like a console. Yep, you can connect a mouse and keyboard and connect it to a display and use it like a PC. Oh. It like it does everything. So uh the most flexible and I wouldn't it's not the cheapest, but yeah. it's not the most expensive either. So exactly. It's really flexible. Yeah, man. Like uh yeah boy. Um my brother, that's the first thing he did. And he was a little bit more into stadia than I thought. I mean, I remember I had a conversation with him earlier in the year and he's like, I really ain't been playing it. The wife's been playing it. They, they don't have all the games that I want. So I thought he kind of gave up on it, but he didn't. He just was, I guess he was just at a low point. And as things started to pick up in the end of the year, like a lot of people, he, he was starting to get excited again. Uh, so he he was, when he found out that they died, I'm surprised he called me when he did. Like he called me for answers. <laughs> like, a, like I was directly under Phil Harrison or something. You know, he was like, oh, what? what? all about what's this bull crap about why didn't you warn me <laughs> why didn't you warn me and you know, I, 
This took me by surprise, just, just as it did you. But um, the first thing he did is he went and bought a Steam Deck. He asked me. He like me and him had like three different conversations that day. And I and I haven't talked to my brother <laughs> like that. I haven't talked to him three times in one day in years. So we had like three different conversations that day. And uh, I ended, that's when I ended up catching COVID. You know, and, and the symptoms started hitting me while I was on the phone with him. So, you know, I was out for about four or five days. Next thing I know, he got a Steam Deck. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of Stadia gamers or I think, or cloud gamers in general. I think they they were rattled and they're, they're looking for a hardware backup to their cloud game. Yeah. I don't blame them. It makes sense. Makes sense. Well, um, that's it for today's show, man. I think that a, I think that covers all of the big news for today um, or so far. You guys will see more and more stuff coming from us to help you and your keep up with the, not only the cloud gaming news, but help you make your cloud decisions. Um, with that said, let's wrap this up and let everybody know where we can be found. We'll start with you, Lofi. Where can the great people find you at? You can find me on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash lofi monk. You can find me on Twitter at lofi underscore monk. And that's about it. That's where I say I'm going to start streaming on Twitch. A lot more coming Ooh. up here soon. So be on the lookout for that. And I'll yeah. be announcing that. Also, I unlocked the community tab for uh, my channel. Awesome. So oh, yeah. keep an eye out for community posts for coming from me. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, thank, thank you. But you had to get to what? how many subs? 300 subs or? I don't know. I don't know what I did. I know they they lowered the amount that you need to get into the community. Okay. Tab things, but no, nothing hard. I also, they're supposed to be rolling out uh, the handles. I haven't got that yet. Uh, you haven't got it yet. Yeah, we we, we, we got ours. I, and, and it is funny because we got ours for uh, Stadia dosage. Uh, Jesus Christ. Cloud dosage streams. We got ours already. So. Um, That's dope. Well, here's the thing. The, the reason why I asked that is, uh, you know how we do. Let me show you something. Um, this is our stream channel, Cloud Dosage Streams, uh, where we have a variety of uh, games streaming there. Uh, GFN, Luna, even still some Stadia and so forth. We're going to have a lot more coming to xCloud stuff. Um, See, we're at 285, and the channel has been flying, man. Uh, Squid dropped a video for something, and I, it's got like 25,000 views. <laughs> so Squid is like, oh, he's, yeah. got, he's got the channel flying. Um, but uh, yeah, we're at 285, and we don't have the community tab yet. You know what I mean? So, but I'm, I'm seeing here, I, this is new. There's a tab for shorts. That's dope. We ain't got the community tab yet. Oh, I didn't even know. That. I think I got like a, a notification and I had to make a post. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Either I got a notification or I had to check my email or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. be on the lookout for that stuff. Yeah, check. Yeah, check us out. Um, Cloud dosage streams. Um, now, because we're recording this on Friday with our members, we have a spectacular, amazing 4K video of Outriders. Like, I, I know people are like, well, Outriders isn't the best looking game out there. You haven't seen Outriders like this. Come and make sure you check out that video. Amazing 4K Outriders quality stream series. You're not going to want to miss it. All right. Um, so you can catch me here on cloud dosage news cloud dosage streams you can now catch me out over on uh twitch as well over at what we call the hard knock digital culture where we got a lot of hardcore gaming hardcore movies hardcore anime check me out over there and then check me out on mm2k videos um before we go there's a couple more comments from our good friend um dusty ran over in the member section let me see if i can find them real quick uh he says Kind of like MS talking up the app store idea. That's cool. 
but are they jinxing themselves by talking it up this early? Yeah, they like they tend to do a lot of things in flight, and I wish for the sake of them they would stop doing it. Um, but if they're ready to if they're ready to roll, then you know, I mean, they're talking this thing up. And it seems like that this mobile store is really going to be contingent upon them going through with the Activision Blizzard deal. And I don't know if that's solid yet. I mean, I'm still in the belief 60, 40 in favor of them going through with it, that it'll happen. But this CMA, man, they're making it hard. And he says, since Xbox yeah. said that in shelved Keystone, do you think Xbox will less showy? Hey, look at me with X cloud. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I think that's what you were kind of asking. I'm um, lo-fi. Do we think that Xbox is like pushing? It's like stepping away from X Cloud a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. But there's always that feel that they had. The, the silver bullet is always coming. You know, we're, we're upgrading the server blades and all. And and I think they're backing away from that. You know, to yeah, you know, try they're to, just not going that route. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think they're backing away from that. So, all right, cool stuff. Thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, again, uh, stay tuned because we got more content coming. And until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.